Welcome back, everybody. This is Punapi Fun Games from a Funny Guy, and today we have uh, a, a tutorial in uh, Dwarf Fortress. <clears throat> I, I set up a uh, a new world. It's um just a quick random generation world, and uh, we're gonna go through, and I'm gonna do a little tutorial on how to uh, do things. Uh, just you know, first of all, we're just gonna start off with uh, just the world gen uh, gener. Well, we did the world generation, the advanced world generation, and for this one, I'm going to do embarking and what you need to do for that. So, um, as you can see, we're moving around. You can move around with the keypad if you're doing that. Uh, we got four, eight, six, two. You can also hold shift and it moves by, what is that? I think it's 10 or 11 at the time. <clears throat> but yeah, so we have that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, moves by 11. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go through and find our perfect re location. So, a couple of uh, things. Let's say um, we're going around and we see some place that we really like, um, but we, we, we're we not too sure about. Like, let's say uh, right here. here. Here's a location right here. We have a... Uh, A volcano right here, <clears throat> right scrap, scrap or yeah, right here. So we can actually hit N. Uh, this, uh, yeah, hit N to for a note, and we're gonna do N again to add a note. And we're gonna hit Enter to enter text, and we can just put, you know, volcano here or something like that, and hit Enter again for it to be done. We can change the area that this is. You can see it moving around with the U, M, K, and H um, buttons. If you hit the shift and do that as well, U, uh, U increases the side, M decreases, K increases, and H decreases. So you can increase it to be the entire thing. You know, if you wish, it's go it's going to leg the complete hell out of your a system unless you're running some godly, un, you know, powerful all creation machine or something like that. It, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, you can hit S to pick a different symbol. Do, 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 do. Where is it? There we go. Uh, you hit S to pick a symbol. And then you just use the uh, plus and minus keys, or the uh, backslash and the star key, which are all on the number pad as well. Backslash and star increases, it, you know, moves it in intervals of ten. And you can change it to any symbol you like, anything that's on the ASCII keyboard. So you know, it, it's it, there's a wide range of things. So you know, you can have it as the pound symbol if you like, and then. Uh, no, we're not entering text, so adopt symbol, we're going to change that to pounds. As you can see, it just all of it changed to pound. And it also changed to pound on the map as well, and on the bigger map. So we're going to keep that as is, and, um, yeah, we're going to hit escape. It's going to exit out, and now it's there. And as we get close to it, you know, we if we hit escape again, we're back in a normal view, but let's say uh, we have lots of different notes around. You hit N, and it will actually tell you on the upper right-hand part of the screen how far away you are from said note. So the closer you get, obviously, yeah, it's going to be zero zero, and the farther away, etc. So you can also go in and delete a note by hitting D, and that just deletes it all together, um, which we just did. So, that is one thing. Uh, as I showed before, U, M, K, and H moves the uh, little little square around on the mini, on the local map. So you can pick a desired location if you want, if you want to sort of scout around yourself. Um, another trick, uh, let's go up here where I know there's two biomes. You hit F1. And it'll show the first biome you're in. If you hit F2, and this is the Cracked Hill, uh, by uh, Tropical Grassland biome. If we hit 
F2, it shows a, another biome, which is a tropical, tropical coniferous forest. So we have a grassland and a forest. If we hit F3, there's nothing. Um, so yeah, you can see different biomes. And if you try to do F1 and F2 right here, there's only one biome. So it's not going to show alternate biomes. Um, another another thing on there, we have R for reclaim and uh, uh, unretire. We're going to hit that real quick. And we can it brings up this little menu over here of uh, different fortresses. You know, we have one that's uh, Stenodul, which is blinking in the middle here. Uh, yeah, I th believe that's that 3x3 three three location. Alright, and, and the year one, the truthful inks of the uh, found of this place. And the Forgotten Beast. Un Usnar deep fishes, <laughs> the hideous cyst of biles routed uh, routed them and just completely obliterated them. So it'll show um, you know how it was, what year it was founded, and what year it was destroyed, and who it was destroyed by. These two were by uh, for, for, forgotten beasts, but it'll also show like let's say if it's a, a giant or a crack or not a crack and um dragon or something like that anything <clears throat> uh, that was this one i believe was that yeah that one all right um next we have uh different different little things on the map you can see this little symbol right here where my uh screen is right there that there is a dark goblin fortress um, anything that is purple chances are is going to be goblin related or it's going to be haunted no matter what um, if it's bright purple like this it's haunted <clears throat> we have uh, this being purple this is haunted but chances are it's going to be inhabited by goblins and as you can see we have goblins there um, yeah so uh, that is a goblin these little uh, blue fixtures going up, these are rivers, along with these dark blue fixtures. We have um, over here, we have savannas, uh, forests, you know, they, they try to go the same color as everything. We have mountain peaks. These little symbols here, these little uh, ohm symbols, are uh, dwarf fortresses. <coughs> This area is uh, sinister. It's also an ocean. Um, sinister ocean. Right here, this is a human hamlet, I believe. Or is this elves? This is elves. Um, I gotta remember. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's different symbols for everything. Uh, the red symbol that we had here, that's a volcano, that red triangle. Um, and I'm trying to look for one more symbol. I'm not finding it though. Uh, da -da -da. I'm looking for a tower. You know what? Come on. There we go. An easy way to find a tower is just to go in here until you get close to one. There may not be a tower. Oh, and as you can see, I'm also in... The, well, we'll go get to the screen in a moment. I don't believe there's any towers in here. Wow, this may be a first. All right, well... All right, so... This is our main screen, the top right-hand corner of the screen. You noticed how it says oh, the odorous pl plain... Uh, it's a tropical savanna. <clears throat> what we're going to look at is when we hit tab. Um, you can also see how it, we have a listing of sand, clay, very deep soil, shallow meadows, deep meadows, flux stone layers. Those will all come into play later on. Um, but right now we're just going to hit tab and see who our neighbors are. And we see dwarves, humans, goblins, and elves. Dwarves is who we are. And then we have humans and elves. 
the goblins, you can see that they are sort of red, redded out there, meaning that they are hostile. Uh, if they come across, if we come across them, they will attack us. <clears throat> now, later on, if you have uh, a lot of years added on to your uh, your world here, right now, I think I only have maybe like five to ten years added on to this. I just hit this just got out of it real quick but let's say you have 200 plus years and you're you've exited the age of myth oh my my Alexa Ooh. hold on I got an echo dot the other day and every time uh, I, I say something that sounds like her name her trigger phrase she uh, she hacks up <coughs> all right um where was I? Oh, it once you hit 200 plus years or something like that, you, you're gonna start and, and once you exit the age of myth, you're gonna start um, going getting into wars with different factions like the humans and elves, and it'll actually pop up on this screen in big bold red letters war. You want to watch out for that um, unless you're prepared for it because you're gonna be attacked very quickly and you're going to be sieged, you're going to be ransacked, they're, they're going to do everything they can to, to come at you. Alright, we hit tab again, and we see your civilization. This one, you don't want to look in the region map, you want to look on the world map for this one. Because you're, you won't see it pop up on the region map too much, but you can see I'm hitting uh, the plus and minus key, and you're seeing different little blue spots pop up. And those are all different uh different civilizations of the dwarves. So right here is a syrup of conflict. Ooh, syrup, yummy. <laughs> um and here is the stable lens down below. Then we have at the very bottom the mirror of God, respectful hammers. These are all different um civ dwarf dwarven civilizations. And depending on where you embark, you're going to want to have the closest civilization to you so that you can actually get your supply depots rather quickly <laughs> when they do come and um, it, it also helps we're gonna hit tab again and we're gonna see relative elevation blue being obviously the lowest and you know the dotted white being the highest so right now where are we we're right here this is the hill it's a hill it's a giant hill Hill of Compassion. It's a savanna. So we're going to go back here. We can see um, in this area up here, it's obviously the lowest. Then we start get it going up and up more, uh, where it is here being the highest of the hill, the peak of the hill. Something to keep in mind. If you hit tab again, you can see a cliff indicator. And this will show you not, not so much... Um, the elevation but if there are any cliffs any you know sudden drop-offs or hikes in elevation out of nowhere like here we have obviously the mo very most bottom part right here and then it's just a cliff right here so something to keep in mind as well helps with um, volcanoes you can see the extreme cliffs I'll show you that with the volcano where was it Oh yeah, you can see here, you know, extreme cliffs. Where where is this? Wow. That is that is crazy. I would wouldn't have expected that <laughs> of the uh, in the ocean. Anyway, um here's the volcano and the uh the star and where was the volcano? Right here dead square in the middle of where that is. The bright red is the peak of the volcano right there with a little dip. So <clears throat> you can see it's actually a very big volcano. It's coming up on this side primarily, but it, it drops down very quickly right here and right here. Um, <clears throat> you know, that, that's something to keep in mind as well. And that sort of ends the, uh, the tab aspect of the top or the right hand most side so next we're gonna we're going to uh, uh, go into find desired location we hit F 
and we can find a 3x3, three three, a 4x3. You can change the dimension to anything you want, full screen and everything. But we're just going to do 3x3. Three three. Savagery is, um, if you watched any of my other tutorial vi video, it goes into what each of these uh, different items mean in, in relation to the world. So I'm not going to go over that right now. It's just going to take too long. So we're just going. I'm just going to leave these. You know what? We're we're going to uh, go evil low, savagery low, because I want a nice, easy sort of area for um, for my tutorial thing. Uh, elevation. In, <coughs> we're going to keep low. Actually, you know what? We'll keep that as is. Whatever. Um, flex stone. I do want a flex stone layer. That is. Uh, economic rock where you build things out of. I have aquifer turned off so this doesn't make a difference to me or not. Um, it's all it all depends on what you want out of it. An aquifer is just a giant chasm f usually filled with water. Um, so it, it, it takes up an entire uh, layer or few of your Z layers going down. I usually don't like it. River, we're going to hit yes, because I like having a river. It helps with uh, healing and whatnot and stuff like that. If you if you go into a mountainous area at also and you have no soil, it helps with irrigation and farming. <coughs> uh, shallow meadows, I'm just going to do multiple. We're going to do multiple. Soil, I'll do deep. Well, you can even do a little bit of soil. Clay, I don't care too much about. So, all right, once we have whatever we want... Uh, we're going to hit enter, and it's going to go through the entire map, little by little, and find everything that we're looking for. Right now, it's having trouble. It's it's having it, it fa it's found everything that we wanted, but it's having trouble right now finding evil low and a little bit of soil. It's found everything else. Now it's just the evil low. If we can get that down. I don't think it's found any yet. Because if, if it has found any, it would be blinking in green. Uh, now it's just soil. I don't know. We might have to change... Uh, I'll change up the soil a little bit, and I'll get rid of evil. I'll turn that to medium. <coughs> Alright, so... If we exit out of here, it's not going to give us anything. Unless it finds an exact match of everything, it doesn't do it. So we're just going to set that to that, and we'll keep that low. So we're going to hit enter again. It's going to do another search. <coughs> and uh, once we do find something, we're going to uh, go off and embark. And, uh, yeah. I'll go, I'll go through the different uh, features and everything for the different uh, embark options. There we go. We found something. We found something. We found a few things, actually, right there in a uh, little mountainous area. That's good. I like that. Let that finish up. I'm just going to, uh, for the actual embark, I'm just going to do one of the default ones that uh, Starter Pack comes with. And um, I'm just going to explain what the different options are available instead of going through my own because when I end up going through my own, I I really go in depth on it and uh, take a lot of time. All right, so <clears throat> now that we we have some blinking, we're going to hit escape, and we're going to go through. I got, need to find my cursor. There it is, right in the middle of the ocean. There. All right, so we're going to find right here. Uh, I don't like that. Right there is fine. We have a little bit of uh, shrubland there, and we have a mountain behind us. So I like digging into a mountain. It's fun. And we have some clay, deep soil. It's calm. Woodland. All right, th this, is, this is perfect. We're going to do it right here. <clears throat> we're going to hit E for embark, and we're going to hit enter. Now, um, I have... This setup, it's uh, three. I have three fighters and four non-fighters. Uh, I have two axemen set up. Um, we'll we'll go over that later. I'm just gonna do easy start for new players. We're missing two things that you saw a problem thing come up. All right, so right here we have our different 
dwarves. Now, this is a trick that um, I, I told about in my previous, uh, my first Let's Play for uh, Dwarf Fortress. Uh, you may not be able to see what I'm what I'm doing at the moment, but uh, you want to load up Dwarf Therapist at this point. Um, you load it up, you go into uh, into roles, and you can have a breakdown of every single dwarf that you have right here. All seven of these dwarves will show in Dwarf Therapist and will show who is better at what. And right now, Enod, uh, what is that? Enod, uh, God, uh, Kadoglithith? Anyway, Enod is better off as a miner. He's my highest miner. He's a 74 in his mining tree. Um, likewise, a leader... My best leader is Urist Adolin. He's at a uh, 68. And so far, you can so far, you can go see who's skilled in what. Uh, military, you go to hit the military tab on there as well for dwarf therapist, and you you can't see if they're skilled in different weaponry, but you can see their strength, agility, toughness, endurance. You can see every single little trait about every single one of these seven dwarves. You can see traits, attributes, uh, social skills, and everything. Everything. Right off the bat, before you even <coughs> start deciding anything for them. But I'm just going to leave it as basic as it is right now. Because th this entire thing is just going to be strictly for uh, tutorial purposes. Alright, we're going to go into this tree over here. And we have uh, Miner. Obviously, uh, it's mining. We have woodcutter, which is uh, the woodcutter, co carpenter, masonry, engraver is somebody who engraves things with uh, other things like, um, well, engrave. Actually, engraving would be uh, like s smoothing stones, building fortifications, um, stuff like that. Building designer, that's an architect, uh, weaponsmith creates weapons. Boyer is somebody who creates bows. Uh, and this is strictly bone and wood bows, not metal bows or anything like that. Armor smith is armor. Metal smith is different types of metal items. Anvils, chains, crates, spins, everything. Boxes, barrels, whatever. <coughs> Every Anything you need metal-wise. Furnace operator is somebody who operates the smelting furnace and wood furnace. Well, sorry, it's just smelting. Wood burner is wood furnace. Metal crafter, somebody crafts metal. Um, stone crafter, duh. Same with wood and bone crafter. Uh, they craft wood and bone. This goes with the craftsman workshop a lot. Gem cutter and gem setter. Peop uh, we have guys who can cut gems and set gems into different items. So you can uh, have like an artifact item and they can improve it. Uh, by setting more gems into it, make it more glamorous. It, it's good for increasing your wealth of your population, if you like, and it, it's pretty cool. You can make a uh, you know a wooden spear gemmed, and it, it makes it a lot more valuable. Uh, we have potter, uh, somebody who well makes pots <laughs> and stuff. Clay clay items, glazer, same thing. Paper maker, somebody who makes paper. Book binder, somebody who makes books. Wax worker, they work with bee hives and everything. We have the mechanic who makes, uh, yeah, mechanisms, gears, and all that stuff. Fisherman, f he fishes. <coughs> Miller, uh, mil grinds seeds and into pastes. Uh, thresher, which one is the thresher? Hold on, I gotta remember this one. This one is thresher, thresher, thresher. Oh boy, I can't remember. Oh boy, I can't remember. Well, if anyone can remember, uh, do leave a link. Hold on one second. Uh. 
Let's look it up real quick. <laughs> All right. All right. Thresher. Oh, it's for plant processing. <laughs> I knew it would come to me. I actually looked it up. <laughs> All right. So it's a plant processor, somebody who processes plants, which is actually a very big thing you're going to need later or uh, early on. We have grower. They uh, that's the farmer, herbalist. They gather herbs uh, using the designation or setting up a. Uh, uh, an area where they constantly gra uh, gather. We have brewer. They brew, obviously. Cook. Um, we have weaver. They weave clothes or weave thread into cl uh, into cloth. We have clother who makes clothes, dyers. Trapper is somebody who uh, is good at trapping animals. Ambusher is our hunter. This one took me a long time to figure out <laughs> when I first started playing. Ambush ambusher is your hunter. All right, uh, butcher, tanner, leather worker, fish dissector, animal dissector, fish cleaner, cheese maker, milker. Gelder is um, somebody who uh, spades and neuters your animals. <laughs> Shearer, spinner, presser, beekeeper, um, animal trainer, animal caretaker, animal caretaker. <coughs> um, you'll get after you if I remember right you need to I believe it's the second cavern system second underground cavern system once you have that available and I believe also once you have more than 20 dwarves you will be you'll you'll get an animal caretaker in one of your uh, migration waves uh, soper Somebody who makes soap, lime maker, lime, some potash maker, glass maker. Those are all the professions from here on up. From here down, that's when we start going into military professions and uh, traits, attributes, and roles. Uh, we have axemen, swordsmen, macemen, hammermen, spearmen, crossbowmen, shield user, and armor user. If you um, <coughs> if you're looking to give anyone any of these two points early on like in this area right here only give them one point of each of the shield user and armor user mainly because you give them anything out anything more and it's it's pointless they 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 need to learn to use their armor and shield by themselves and it, it actually um it doesn't do anything to ha anything extra to have a higher armor user and shield user at the very beginning uh, we have fighter, which goes hand in hand with any of these. Just because they have a sword doesn't mean they know how to fight. So keep that in mind. Uh, same with archer, wrestler, striker, kicker, biter, dodger. These three here, wrestler, striker, and archer, and biter, um, are skills that they um, they can learn on their own. If you create a military and then take their weapon away and don't give them a weapon, they'll drop their weapon and start becoming a wrestler, and then a striker, and a kicker, and a biter. Um, <coughs> but otherwise, they'll focus on their primary primary weapon. <coughs> now, I've I've had uh, I've had somebody who was uh, who was a hammer man before, and he ended up getting his primary arm, his right arm, he was right-handed, he ended up getting that arm torn off by a forgotten beast. Ended up killing that forgotten beast because he was also trained in wrestling and biting. Ended up biting that forgotten beast to death because of all that. It, it was it was incredible to watch that fight go on. I was, I was, I thought he was going to die for sure, but he just latched on and would not get off. And the Forgotten Beast couldn't get a hold of him. He was on his back, biting at his neck the entire time. <laughs> so, yeah, he couldn't get a hold of him th throughout that. All right, we have Dodger. They This lets uh, somebody dodge out of the way if they're being attacked. So those are all the military things. We have, uh, oh, we have some more professions. Siege Engineer, Operator. Um, these two are professions as well. We have Miss miscellaneous object user this is for um, fighters that pick up things in the world and can use them to like throw like rocks sticks stuff like that slings 
it, this is more for um, adventure mode, I think, than really dwarf fortress mode. <laughs> we have pump operator <coughs> that obviously operate the pumps. Uh, we have swimmer. Um, this is handy for your military. Something that I've tried multiple times, I've never succeeded, is to create a swimming pool or a sort of swimming room, force my military in there, flood the room up to, I think, like four or five water tiles, which causes them to all freak out, but it also causes them to learn how to swim really quickly. <laughs> Uh, after that, we have wound dresser, diagnosis, surgeon, bone doctor, suture, crutch, and, and those are all for um, for a hospital and everything for a uh, medical guy. After which, we have crutch walker. Uh, if somebody ends up losing their leg or their ability to walk, they're going to need a crutch. This is not something you give them right away, just because they they learn it as soon as they get it. Alright. <clears throat> After which we have Persuader, Negotiator, Liar, Intimidator, Judge of Intent, and Appraiser. These are all good things for um, for uh, brokers to, to know. That way they can sort of haggle with uh, the different caravans that come through. You can get a better price. Uh, we have organizer, record keeper, somebody who's organized, somebody who's a record keeper, go hand in hand. We have conversationalist, comedian, flatterer, co consoler, uh, that's more like a, um, you know, a therapist or something like that. Somebody who's like, oh, I'm sorry. All right, anyway, we have pacifier, somebody who will not fight no matter what, disagrees with it 100%. Uh, student, somebody who's good at learning. Uh, concent concentration. Oh, duh! Wow, that's something I'm lacking at the moment. Concentration. <laughs> um, somebody who's good at concentrating. Uh, discipline, observer, wordsmith, writer, poet, reader, speaker, musician. All of these I really don't use for anything in uh, embarking. Except for maybe um, leader down here. Just because I, I've never had to <laughs> before. I need to look up chemist and a few other things like astronomer. I think you get them after a certain uh, while being in the game. We also have teacher there, which is good. Um, so yeah, that that is the layout and everything. That's if anyone has any questions on this, just you know, uh, add a comment and I'll, I'll you know if they know. Some, something about it or you know how to attain one of these or something like that or you know anything like that or has any ideas leave a comment and uh, I'll get back with you see how it goes um, so we hit tab we go over to uh, our item screen and our um, animal screen and you can have you can pick up any animal you want we have bulls I, I usually go with dogs and you know, one of each dog, one of each cat, and what I also go is a turkey gobbler and a turkey hen. That's usually it. Um, <clears throat> you build a nest box, and they can reproduce those turkey gobblers and hens. The dogs can reproduce, cats can reproduce. Cats are good for bones and food, uh, the kittens, that is. Dogs are good for hunting and war dogs. You post them post the war dogs at the entrances of each of your uh, underground caverns and it's good uh, they they scare off any intruders as they come and they'll also fight gives you enough time to get your military down there and uh, take care of anything that they're not taking care of just an idea all right on this side we have uh, cop we have you know this is our setup right here um, if we hit N, it goes to new, and we can actually go in and pick what we want. Right now, it's slim pickings because we have just about everything here. Um, and we have everything from copper, copper battle axe all the way at the bottom here, the copper picks, iron anvil. I mean, I think they even have. Um, uh, do they have the training 
things in here, training axes. They have splints, crutches, and everything. No, I don't see the training stuff. <coughs> anyway, um, I mean, you, you can add anything you want. You go in here, you can actually type in what you want. So let's say uh, meat. We have... Uh, um, Oh, no, 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 uh, a cougar. We can get cougar blood. See right there? You just earned, you got some cougar blood. <laughs> that could probably use, be used for cooking. All right. Um, you can also take away that and add that. So if we want to add another piece of cow meat, we hit the plus sign. We want to take it away, we hit the minus sign. Same thing for this side over here with the dogs and everything. If we go over here, we want to take a dog away, we hit minus. Give a dog, hit plus. Alright, next, um, we're going to hit F for fort name. Well, capital F, shift F. We have front compound, rear compound, first adjective, second adjective, hyphen compound. If you do hyphen compound... Alright, hold on. Let's get rid of... Oh, I'm hitting r random. Let me clear that. Alright, so we, if we do hyphen compound, ace, we'll do after, the after ace. So you can see that's a hyphen compound. Uh, so, if we also do of, we can do the after ace of age. It's actually pretty cool. Um, something like that. And that's, uh, we hit escape to keep it. You could also do that same thing for the group name. Um, let's say you want to delete something. You hit, you hit enter and you hit C for clear. But this is the blank of, so... It's down here. Abby. Abby. <laughs> the Abby Abby of Abbeys. <laughs> Abby Abby the Aegis Ace Ace Abby of Abbeys. <laughs> I love that. Look how that is pronounced. Cool it, cool it, gatala la 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 gatutu. <laughs> oh my god, I love it. I'm keeping it. That is my group name. Oh, that is awesome. All right, um, we're gonna hit escape to sa uh, save that. Next, we have Y for symbol. Oh, now I hear the music. After all this time, I don't hear any music, and now I hear music as soon as I go in here. <coughs> all right. Bing were the Abbeys. I don't know what to do. Um, we're just going to pick something simple. We're going to do an Aardvark Man 1. Aardvark Man. So now we have an image of an Aardvark Man. We can do a historical figure. We can actually go through and look at every single historical figure. Or uh, we hit F. No, it doesn't show deities. Uh, da, 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 da. Object, artifact, no. Um, it used to show deities. Okay, this guy is the jackal of drink is a forgotten beast. So this is a forgotten beast here. So it's an image of a art park man and Ab Splash Submerge, the Jackal of Drink, the forgotten beast. So we have those two images now and we're going to have them doing something, an action or relationship. So we're going to have X looks terrified. Alright, so it's an image of the Artvark Man, and the Artvark Man looks terrified. We can also do, um... 
where the Aardvark man is being flayed by this guy. So that is our symbol right now. We're gonna Alright, so we're going to hit Y for done. Why did I say that? That was weird. Anyway, alright, so now that we have everything set up with the symbol as well, when you start embroidering things or metal crafting or, you know, stone crafting, anything like that, and they're engraving stuff, now that you have a symbol set up, they will start putting that symbol on different objects. So that is it. Uh, with that, we're going to hit E for embark. And we're going to be on our way. There we go. It says, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain lands and the forbidding wilderness beyond. Your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is set to an outpost for the glory of all. Rinorlin. Rinor. Rinor Leal. Wow. Rinor Leal. Anyway. <coughs> I hate that little umlaut thing. Uh, there are almost no supplies left, but with stout labor comes substance. Or sustenance. <coughs> Whether by bolt, plow, or hook, provide for your dwarves. You're expecting a supply caravan just before the winter entombs you, but it is spring now. Enough time to delve secure lodgings ere the cougars get hungry. A new chapter of dwarven history begins here and at this place. Oh god. Nikolak Anam. The after ace of age. Strike the earth. We hit escape and we're in. Alright everybody. That was wonderful so far. I'm um, just going to take a quick look at this. Alright, we got a little mountain range down here. Freeze, it's frozen over, so alright. Alright, alright. Oh, that's a big mountain range. Look at that. That goes way up. Alright, I like that. that that's good. Alright, so. I always check that. We have here, we are, we have embarked, and um, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Um, the next tutorial, we're pro I'm going to be showing the designation um, screen here, the designation tab, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of everything. We're going to dig, we're going to mine, we're going to channel, build some stairs up, down, ramps, everything. We're going to remove some stuff, the whole nine. Gather plants, smooth stones, and gravestones, all that. We're going. I'm going to show you how to do it all on, on, in the next episode, uh, you know, mining-wise. Um, after that, you know, we're just going to go down the list and start uh, doing a little bit of everything. I'll show you the different screens and what they do. All right, thank you all for watching. Uh, this has been Punapi, fun games from a funny guy. Hope you enjoyed. If you have, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Much appreciated. I will see you all next episode. Goodbye and good night.